First of all, I just want to say um, uh, well, um, Happy New Year to everyone. It's a Tibetan New Year recently, and um, it's also the start of our New Year, our New Year of Dharma teachings. So, uh, first of all, I want to say how pleased and that, well, how happy I am that I've returned um, from India and I'm with all my Dharma friends again. And then um, we now have the fortune to start again our teachings for this year, with tonight being our very first uh, weekend class. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to start tonight with um, the text Praise for Dependent Arising, which was written by the incomparable master uh, J. Rinpoche. So J. Rinpoche, or Lama Tsongkhapa, is, amongst the, uh, is included amongst a, s- a select group of the um, most, este- most esteemed or the um, most famous of the ac- many accomplished Tibetan masters. And he um, turned out to be the founder of the um, Goluk tradition. So that is a text, the praise for dependence arising, that we're going to start with tonight. And um, from a, a very young age, Lama Tsongkhapa put great um, energy into, into studying and receiving many teachings and studying those teachings to try and come to a, a precise and profound understanding of the various points of the Dharma. And he studied with many te- uh, teachers, eventually coming to one called Lama Umapa. And so um, his uh, name, Umapa, means middle way. And this is the, what he studied with um, Lama Umapa. He studied the um, teachings on the middle way. And as he ca- came to a greater understanding and he purified further and accumulated further, he came, uh, Lama Tsongkhapa came to have uh, visions of, of uh, Manjushri. And these visions were as clear as we see each other right now. And, um, and not only w- were they uh, visions of, of Man- Manjushi, but uh, Lama Tsongkhapa was able to engage in conversation with him. And um, so he, in particular, he would ask him questions about the uh, subtle points and the points that he was having difficulty coming to a correct understanding. And through this process, then, he eventually came to um, realize emptiness and become one of the, um, the, the great or the most uh, famous and accomplished of our lamas of the Tibetan tradition. Mm-hmm. And as he, he studied further and further and engaged in um, um, not only a, a, a profound daily meditation practice, but then also into a um, concentrated period of retreat where he um, um, came to even a greater profound understanding of the various topics of the Dharma. And with such an, uh, a basis of knowledge and realization based on that knowledge, 
he um, composed a great number of texts. It was actually 18 volumes of texts that uh, Jerem Bishay composed. Jerem Bishay composed a great number of texts that Jerem Bishay composed. And these texts weren't, um, because of the vastness of his study and the profundity of his uh, realizations, Jerem Pichet didn't just compose um, on one uh, topic of, of speciality, but rather he composed across the topics of both Sutra and Tantra. And moreover, his uh, texts were uh, pure and unmistaken. And these texts then were um, not just theoretical, but were, um, um, uh, 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 were, were are the basis for not just theoretical understanding, but also for practice. In other words, to put the uh, meaning of the texts into practice. <laughs> Here we've been speaking now about um, the, the qualities of, or some of the qualities of the composer of, of our text. And this text actually is, serves a similar purpose in that the text is a praise to the qualities of the Buddha. So we're talking about, we're praising now the qualities of Lama Tsongkhapa, but um, the text we're going to study, in this, he praises the qualities of the Buddha. So in your text, you can see the full title. In brief, we say a praise for dependent arising, but it's a praise to uh, Buddha Shakyamuni for having composed or for having taught dependent arising. And so this uh, praise to the Buddha is for the specific quality of having taught dependent arising. <laughs> In society, we, we also praise people for their, their good qualities. But being um, ordinary people, we tend to praise each other about very ordinary things. Maybe um, about someone's uh, particular skills, such as being able to uh, dance well or sing beautifully, or maybe they have um, a, a great talent in their work, or about qualities of their personality, such as being kind-hearted. So these are the, the kinds of um, qualities that we as ordinary people tend to praise each other about. <coughs> The <laughs> But when one comes to um, praise a being such as a Buddha, a being that with um, all good qualities uh, de developed to the, the, uh, the state of perfection, to the state where they are fully and completely developed, then, of course, there are immeasurable qualities that one can, can praise such a being about. 
in terms of um, our historical Buddha, there are many physical uh, characteristics that he can be praised for. He can be also praised for his um, practices or the six perfections, or the, his, um, the, the qualities of practices such as generosity within his continuum, etc., as well as the, the other mental qualities such as love and compassion. But despite all of these immeasurable qualities, none of these are what J. Rinpoche is specifically praising the Buddha for here. Rather, he's praising him specifically for the presentation that he gave on dependence arising. Because the, the topic of, um, of dependence arising has many levels, starting from coarse le uh, levels, going down to subtler and very uh, uh, subtle levels. And all of these, uh, the Buddha came to know unmistakably. And, there, and, and with this, this um, unmistaken realization, was then, uh, he then propounded or taught dependent arising. So it's for this quality in particular that J. Rinpoche is praising Buddha Shakyamuni for. So this, um, just to mention again, then that text that we're looking at, the name in brief, is um, Praise for Dependent Arising. And as you have there before you, the name in full is the, the essence of eloquent speech, a praise to the unsurpassed teacher, the Buddha Bhagavan, for teaching the profound through dependent arising. <coughs> and that's what we're going to be looking at. Sanjit you, you all have some experience in the Buddha Dharma, so you know that every activity that one does, one should um, start this with a setting a virtuous motivation, and then one engages in, in the, the practice or the activity. And then the third uh, aspect is that afterwards one should dedicate. Well, tonight is our, our first class of this um, uh, text, where, which we'll be looking at probably for this entire year. And so, um, being the first class, it's important that we um, uh, set a strong and stable motivation, not just for um, our, our class tonight, but to take us through the entire practice section of the motivation, practice, and, and, and dedicate. And so, we need to establish a strong motivation tonight. The motivation that um, I've set and that I'd encourage you to set as well is to set the motivation of bodhicitta, a motivation that recognizes that each and every sentient being, we have a close and personal connection with them, and that all of them, just like us, want to experience only happiness and want to be completely form free of all forms of suffering, no matter how slight. And in order to be able to lead all beings to such a state, we ourselves have to achieve such a state, a state of enlightenment, arise as a Buddha, develop the qualities of a Buddha. And to be, in order to achieve this goal of Buddhahood for the sake of, of, of um, others, one has to engage in the practices of a Bodhisattva, to generate this mind of, of Bodhicitta for the sake of others, to strive for Buddhahood, and then commit to engaging the practices of a Bodhisattva. One of which is the perfection of wisdom. And to be able to cultivate the perfection of wisdom, 
one has to study and train in the, uh, the, 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 the um, train in dependent arising. So, for this motivation, we're going to engage in the studies of the dependent arising. <coughs> so that's the motivation I've set, and I'd encourage you to uh, set a similar motivation for tonight, as well as for your own review of the, of the teachings and the coming classes. <coughs> Now we start with the text, and it starts with a uh, homage that um, uh, Jerem Bishay composed. And the, the, San, the Sanskrit is Namo Guru Manchu Gosha, and we have it in, in English. I pay homage to Lama uh, uh, Manchu Gosha. So here Lama Manchu Gosha refers to um, uh, Jairam Pusey's Lama, who he sees as indi- indivisible from Manchushri or from Manchu Gosha. So Lama Manchu Gosha refers to his Lama or Lamas, who he sees as indivisible from um, um, uh, Manchushri. ジェルムジギ、ラマジャンベヤンラチャソロシゴロワ。ねえ、ジェルムジギ、ラマジャンベヤンラチャソロマラバジ、マスワジ、ね、ナモグロマンズゴワヤラゴ、キムジェンガレ
which classification of, of uh, which classification this text belongs to. So there are three classifications, and it is indicated through uh, through um, t- it's indicated by the object that the prostration is offered to in the homage at the beginning. So if a praise, if a homage or a praise is offered to um, Manjushri, then we know it fits into the the basket basket or the pitaka of the Abhidhamma. But on the other hand, if a praise was offered to um, to Buddha, then it would have um, fall, fallen into the classification of the uh, the basket or the the pitaka of of uh, the Vinaya. So this text. It's not a text, this text that Jeremy Pache has composed, it's not to do, deal with the topic of the Vinaya, um, or the um, monastic code, but rather it's to deal with wisdom, or the Abhidhamma. Hence, the prostration is made to Manjushri to indicate to someone who doesn't know the text, just by reading the, the homage, that this text is to do with wisdom, in that it um, falls under the Abhidhamma Pitaka. ที่สังเกตเนี่ยมาบึกเก็บบึกกันแล้วนะเราจะว่าเนี่ยมาดังบ่เราจะมาจังกัดดังที่เนี่ยสังเกตจังกัดเกี่ยวกับเบื้องห
Okay. <laughs> I'll wait for Andy to come. <laughs> so I'll, I'll keep going so Andy has something to work with. So the reason for having the, um, the homage at the start is, th is that um, the, reason, the, re oh, the reason for having the homage may be away from my mouth. The reason for having the homage at the start is not still this crackly. Maybe down here, yeah. and uh, it's below. Can you can uh, can you hear me? Okay now. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Okay. Um, so the reason for having a homage is um, so that a Lama Tsongkhapa who sees his Lama as uh, indivisible, indivisible, or indistinguishable from Manjushri, through paying homage to to them at, or to him at the start, this accumulates great virtue. And this virtue then is, um, is, is required so as to eliminate obstacles for the composition of this text as well as for the, this, this text um, to be completed, the composition of this text to be completed. So for those two reasons, to eliminate obstacles to the composition as well as for the composition to be completed, um, texts start with a homage. <coughs> え、ね、Similarly, in, in our cultures, we also have um, ways that are seen as culturally appropriate to, to greet people. And so this, what, this homage or a praise or a prostration that is offered at, at, at the time of encountering uh, someone is the, uh, the, the tradition or the, um, the, the, the custom of holy beings. So holy beings have this as a custom to, st to, to greet with a homage or with a, a, a prostration or a salutation. Mm. Now we come to the, the first verse. Um, so I'll read it in case someone didn't get one. Um, I bow down to the unsurpassed teacher whose supreme omniscience realized and taught the conquering dependence arising. <coughs> Sixing, <laughs> So we have in our third line here the word realized. This word realized then refers to having realized dependence arising, which we then have mentioned in the fourth line. So the term realized here refers to having realized dependent rising, not just the coarse levels, but the subtle levels, and amongst the subtle levels, all the, uh, the subtlest levels, so all the various levels of subtlety, the Buddha has realized, um, and not just realized, but realized directly. So that is what the term here, realize, refers to. It refers to having realized dependence arising, and all levels of subtlety. <laughs> And 
Stool in the third line, realized and taught. The taught here then refers to that um, uh, Lord Buddha not only realized the uh, realized dependent arising, but he, he taught it. And, he, and here there's the the hidden meaning behind this word taught, which would uh, relate to the, his motivation. So with a motivation pervaded by the minds of love and of compassion for all sentient beings. So with this motivation of love and compassion for all sentient beings, wanting them to attain the um, st- a state of lasting, uninterrupted, uninterrupted happiness, the Buddha taught dependent arising. And, this, and his teaching of the dependent arising based on his unmistaken uh, realization, meant that the teaching too is unmistaken. That's a new body, Kenna, Dumba Lana Mess. Tisanda, Sanyu Jim Denikurong, and a chick. Kemba Lana Mebares, or Kemba Lana Mebala, the Kemba, how go and Dentig and Namsha Toba, the Kemba Nane, Kurale Yagas Yomar, Nisu Kinke, Shinke and Kurale Yagas Yomar, it's been. ジャムリナレアネチュチュルマンゴヨディナデドンバマンゴヨロワダチチュルバダンチュルバナレチュルバマンゴヨロワディニギデンゲンデニギチェバチェガマンゴヨロワディニギデンゲンデニギチェバチ
Then so, uh, what we've been looking at here then is that this, the Buddha is being praised for the, uh, his qualities. So uh, we, could say, we could say that amongst all the um, educated beings, the Buddha is by far supreme. But Jeremy Pache is not just leaving this as a mere bland statement, but he's presenting um, some reasons. So this topic of dependence arising is a topic that the Buddha has come to uh, know directly through realization, and not just on a coarse level, but at the subtlest levels, and not just intellectually, but realized. And then he didn't just keep that information to himself. With his motivation of love and compassion for all sentient beings without exception, he shared his knowledge, he shared his realizations with all beings. And he wasn't like an ordinary educated person who may think about, well, if I share all my knowledge, then others may um, develop skills greater than me. Others may become more famous, more renowned than I am, and then I'll actually end up losing us. So I should keep back some key points to myself. The Buddha didn't do that. The Buddha shared the entire path, the entire method, to attain the exact same re realization as he did. The Buddha taught the entire method to develop oneself to the fullest, of uh, the most complete capacity. So for this reason then, the Buddha is also um, praised not just for his supreme wisdom or supreme omniscience, but also for being an unsurpassed teacher, because of teaching in an unmistaken manner and doing so with the motivation of love and compassion. จะได้เข้าไปเสียอย่างเช่นอยากช่วยเขาอะไรเสียยิ่งเบื่อจริงจังก็สิเขาเรื่องเตี้ยนเดียนนำเสียอยากไปเขียนเตี้ยนเดีย
Pene ma sal ma tava in dele nyugutje, sabon dele tene nyugutje. Nyugutje ya 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 as we've said now many times, there are these different levels of subtlety. So we'll start with one that's very easy to understand. Let me think of um, the, the first type, the dependency, uh, the dependent um, on causes and conditions. So that's the first type, dependent on causes and conditions. So we can think of a seed being a, co- a cause re- leading to the result of a seedling. So from a seed comes a seedling, or from a seed eventually comes a flower. So cause and result. This is an easy um, uh, illustration of dependency, a uh, dependence on causes and conditions. Mm-hmm. Uh if you want another easy to understand illustration, you think of um, how we came into this world. So we were once infants and we came into this world based on uh, the cause of being given birth to by our mothers. And this is something that um, happened to us, happened to um, all living beings, all animals and humans. So this is a rela- uh, relationship of cause and effect where um, independence on uh, the cause of having been given birth there was a child who could then, or an infant who could then grow. So this is something we all know and we have, we have observed in the world. And so this kind of, of dependency is where one thing is dependent on, a, on another. Where one thing is dependent on, an, on, on another. What this then means is, if there is no cause, there will be no result. For there to be a result, there needs to be a cause. <coughs> Chapa Let's just um, take it to a slightly less coarse level, but one that's still easy to understand. Is if we um, if we want to be happy, we also want those around us to be happy. That is something that is in, independent on on causes such as being a, a kind-hearted person, a, 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 a being a good person. And similarly, if our mind is angry, then independence on this mind of anger, clearly we are not happy at that time. And all those that we encounter, dominated by this mind of anger, we are likely to bring unhappiness to them as well. So here we can see that from a virtuous mind, such as love and compassion, then with that as a cause, then a result of happiness for oneself and for others will follow. But from afflicted mind, such as um, a, a desirous attachment or, or ignorance or anger, then suffering comes for oneself, as well as um, unhappiness for others. So in this way we can see this relationship of dependency, or de- this uh, dependence uh, of cause and effect, in relation that from a particular mind comes an experience of either happiness or suffering. 
So this is also something we all have experience of and we, we also um, understand easily. Then Tsar Yamninja Jamzijana, Chisanta So then to uh, look further at this presentation on a uh, dependency of, on, on causes and conditions. So if we want to develop um, a kind heart and inner, inner qualities, we need to um, understand how to do so, how to develop these qualities within ourselves so, th so that they grow. Likewise, if we want to eliminate the um, afflicted minds, minds that cause us pain and suffering, then we need to understand what to eliminate, how to eliminate, how to eliminate these. So this is all also included in the type of dependency that is the depend, uh, dependent on causes and conditions. So earlier we spoke about the two types and we're still looking at the one, the first, the dependency on causes and conditions. Because what, if some, um, if something that is dependent on causes and conditions, what this means is that if one either wants a particular result or doesn't want a particular result, that is dependent on the causes being accumulated or eliminated. So if one wants a particular result, the causes have for that have to be accumulated. If one doesn't want a particular result, one doesn't want to experience something, those causes then must not be accumulated. So for example, uh, we, we hear hearing really far too often in the news about bushfires. So bushfires, of course, these come in dependence on causes. If there's nothing to burn, no bushfire. If there's no fire, no bushfire. So you need fire, you need uh, 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 um, uh, dry grass, uh, dry trees, etc. A variety of causes to come together and the results will come. So that is a very easy example again to understand. But where it's important for us is in terms of the application of, of our minds, our inner world, and in terms of the happiness we want to experience, the suffering we don't want to experience. So 
So furthermore, if we want to experience um, happiness, then we need to cultivate minds such as love and compassion and wisdom realizing emptiness. But the mere wish for that result will not bring about the result. What, because this is a dependent arising, and, and a, the dependent arising that is dependent on causes and conditions. So if we want the result to develop the mind of love within us, or the mind of compassion, or the mind that is the wisdom realizing emptiness, we have to develop those causes. And those causes come about through practice, in other words, through studying and meditating. <coughs> On the converse, we also don't want to, 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 to suffer. And if we want to eliminate this result that is suffering, any kind of unwanted mental pain, mental anguish, physical suffering, we have to identify the causes. And so let's look at so those causes then of our suffering are our afflicted minds. So for example, we mentioned the mind of attachment, if the, mi or the mind of attachment and the mind of anger. When these are, um, are ripen, when we have these present, we experience suffering. So attachment and anger are the cause of suffering. But those minds of attachment and anger, they also have a cause. And they have a cause of ignorance of self-grasping. So this then is what we need to eliminate. So we see here the result of suffering comes from um, a grosser, a coarser cause, such as um, an afflicted mind, such as anger and attachment, which comes from a subtler cause of ignorance and grasping. So there's this relationship of, of dependency. Likewise, to eliminate this cause of suffering, this ignorance of self-grasping, so that, if to eliminate that, that's the goal, to eliminate that, we need to accumulate the causes to eliminate that. So again, then, the here too is a relationship of dependency. And what is, how do you eliminate the causes of suffering, this ignorance of self-grasping? It's through using our analytical mind, based on, 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 on study, in, investigate, and develop the mind that is the wisdom realizing emptiness. So the cause for eliminating the ignorance of self-grasping is um, the wisdom realizing emptiness. So again here, we see a relationship of cause and effect, a dependence arising of cause and effect. So this then is a, a subtler presentation and a presentation of, of particular use for um, uh, uh, dependency on causes and conditions. Nucho so, um, some minutes ago we mentioned uh, there are many levels of subtlety of dependent arising, but we can divide dependent arising into two. The first was um, where one thing is dependent on the other in terms of um, a, a relationship of cause and effect. So we've spoken about that now for some minutes. And now let's look at the second type. And that is where one thing is dependent on another. So if uh, yeah, one, one thing is dependent on the other, you need the one for there to be the other. So if this, an illustration would be, for example, in terms of direction. So east is, is dependent on west. If there is no west, there is no east. And conversely, if there is no east, there is no west. These are dependent on each other. Um, so this is the second type of dependency. The one is dependent on the other, the first was, of course, an effect. Di 
是通通得了电的过人不恰巴的人不得电的这人不得了电的过通通恰巴的实际上你的话的嗯呃电的大不电的下下过来过军人买的钱包的穷穷的啥的这人不得电的通通的啥人的人话的通话那你头包的下的
and not just taught it from a point of um, intellectual knowledge, but through having realized it, and realized it completely and directly. And he also taught, that, and he taught it on a, uh, on a deeper level too. So he didn't just teach the process of cause and effect that leads to our suffering, but also how through this understanding of dependence arising, this dependency on, on cause and e- causes and conditions, we can eliminate um, the, the, our suffering, is if we then say the, um, the, 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 the uh, ignorance of self-grasping, which is the root cause of all suffering, how to eliminate that? So th- to eliminate that, we need to develop a cause which will eliminate that, And so the elimination of suffering, the elimination of ignorance, would be the result, and the cause would be um, developing the mind that is the wisdom realizing emptiness. So the cause of the wisdom realizing emptiness leads to the result of eliminating ignorance of self-grasping. So here again, we see this relationship of dependency. But uh, merely wishing for the mind that is the wisdom realizing emptiness will not lead to us having it. For that, we also need to develop causes. So here we then would change and say the wisdom realizing emptiness, that's the result we want to achieve, so we need to develop the causes. The causes are meditation based on its own cause of study, of the acquiring of knowledge. So this is what Buddha Shakyamuni taught, this unique teaching of dependence arising. Here we're looking at it in, in terms of the first division again, dependency on causes and conditions. ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
existent. Marie So we've just mentioned then how the, um, the I appears. It appears to be inherently existent, and, and what that means, that it appears to be self-existent, not dependent on anything at all, but self-existent, or inherently existent, or um, its own nature. So I think you have a little sheet of paper with all of these synonyms. So um, that's how the I appears to us. And then our, our mind of ignorance grasped at the, this mind as, as, as existing in this way that it appears. And this is the ignorance of self-grasping, or it can be called the ignorance of true grasping. But in this situation, more correctly, is ignorance of self-grasping, but it's, it would be the same. Then, so that's the cause of all our suffering. Then, When we come to realize that the, that the self that appears to be inherently existent is empty of existing inherently, that is when we realize emptiness. So what is emptiness? It's understanding. So what is empty, uh, the emptiness of, of realizing the emptiness of the self? That the self is empty of existing in the way that appears. It's empty of existing as self-existent, as truly existent, as inherently existent. And again, just to use uh, some of these synonyms, because for some people, some words are better than others. So instead of saying emptiness, we can say voidness, or you know, maybe voidness is, is a better one. So the self is void or empty of existing inherently, of being self-existent. And the, so that is the realization of emptiness. And the mind that realizes emptiness is called the wisdom realizing emptiness. So when you hear the term wisdom realizing emptiness, wisdom is the mind. What is it realizing? Emptiness. What is emptiness? It means uh, that the object, in this case the self, does not exist inherently or is not self-existent. It is empty of being self-existent. Empty of being inherently existent. And here we, have, we talk about, in this process, two minds. Ignorance of self-grasping and the wisdom realizing emptiness. These minds are contradictory. They cannot exist together. So as we, when, we, when we realize emptiness directly, the ignorance of self-grasping is eliminated. Yeah, maybe. Don't say about it, yeah.
and then let's um, in the time remaining look let's look at how then one can meditate on emptiness through using the understanding of dependence arising so first we start with as we heard with how the eye appears we need to try and come to see for ourselves how the eye appears the eye or the self how it appears and we should come to get when we get a feeling for how our um, eye appears we should see that it appears as being something that's not dependent on anything else but appears to be independent so this now we need to look for that eye that appears to be independent that appears to exist to be self-existent and if it exists in this way we should find it so if it exists in this way it's going to be in one of two places either somewhere away from us or here, where we are. And of course it's here, it's not out there in the trees. And if it's here with us, it can only be in one of two places. In our body, or our physical aggregate, or in our minds, or our mental aggregate. So we can look first in, in the body, and it's clear our sense of self doesn't abide in any single body part, nor in, either the, nor in the collection. And what about the mind? So if we look at single mind, such as the mind of anger, that's not the self, because if it were, if, if the self-existent self were the mind of anger, for example, it would always be angry. And luckily, that's not the case. Nor, unfortunately, it's the mind of happiness, because we are not always happy. So in this way, we can investigate the minds individually, also collectively, and see that the self-existent um, I, or this inherently existent I, doesn't exist in our body or in our minds. This then leads us to an understanding of, of emptiness. We come to understand that the I is empty of existing in the way that it appears. It's empty of existing inherently, empty of being self-existent. And the mind that comes to this understanding is the wisdom understanding emptiness. And so we come to this understanding through the wisdom understanding emptiness, that the I does not exist independent of causes and conditions, independent of parts. It doesn't exist, um, uh, it's not self existent or inherently existent. and we continue our meditation. So the point we've come to here is that we, we've come to an understanding of emptiness, seeing that the I is empty of existing in the way that it appears, it's empty of being truly existent or inherently existent. It's, it, does not, it is not independent of causes and conditions or parts or, or, or anything other than itself. So then the next part of the meditation is, does the, the I then not exist at all? Because we've come to a realization or an understanding of emptiness. So does the I not exist at all? Do I not exist at all? So of course we can say that the I exists. But what we've seen is when we investigate and we search, as we've done in these preceding stages, we don't find the I, but we come to an understanding of emptiness. But when we don't investigate, sure, there's an I that's meditating. There's an I that's come to understand emptiness. 
this I then, this I that we can say it exists, it exists as a dependent arising. And what of those two types of dependent arising? Now we talk about the second type, the dependence on imputation. So the I exists as an uh, dependent on imputation by mind. So if we investigate, come to, we can't find this I that it appears to exist in, inherently, but we see the I is empty of inherent existence, we realize emptiness. And, but if we don't exist, there is an I that we can talk about. And so this I exists as a mere imputation by mind. Oh, Kingin 然后, concluding the verse, um, it's a little difficult to, uh, so I'll just read the whole verse because in this first verse, the Tibetan and the English are, are mixed in the translation. So now again, let's let, read the last two lines from the Tibetan, but it's mixed for us. I bow down to the unsurpassed teacher whose supreme omniscience realized and taught the conquering dependence arising. So what Ajay Rinpoche is saying here is that it's um, only the Buddha who has taught dependence arising and taught it in a way that is um, unmistaken and that is, that is completely unmistaken. So having realized dependence arising and taught it masterfully, for these qualities, I prostrate to you. And uh, the meaning that, uh, in brief then of this verse is that um, Ajay Rinpoche is offering praise to the Buddha because it was the Buddha who um, came to uh, understand and realize directly all the levels of subtlety of dependence arising. And he didn't leave it at that, but he taught this to others and he taught it to others completely. And he taught it to others in a way so that others can come to develop this, uh, this knowledge within themselves and come to realize um, uh, realize emptiness directly. So he did this because all sentient beings who the Buddha once was just like have the wish for happiness and to be freed from suffering. And to truly achieve this, the Buddha taught how to, firstly, what the causes of our suffering are, the afflicted minds, such as anger and attachments, and in particular the root of all of these afflicted minds, the ignorance of self-grasping. And together with this, he also taught 
the antidote to this ignorance of self-grasping, namely the wisdom that realizes emptiness. Then taught the entire method for cultivating this, um, this understanding of emptiness within oneself and thereby being able to eliminate suffering. So the Buddha did this because he, when he came to, to realize um, emptiness and dependence arising, he eliminated all his problems. He was completely freed from suffering and developed all good qualities. But he didn't just sit back and say, I've done the hard work, now, now I get to enjoy it. Rather, with this motivation of love and compassion, he shared with, uh, with his students how to develop these minds within themselves. And he shared them the complete method in an unmistaken manner. And so it's for these reasons that J. Rinpoche is praising uh, Buddha Shakyamuni. We started then tonight um, to look at this text of praise for dependence arising. Well, the key thing that we've seen tonight and that we'll continue to develop on is that all of us want to ex- experience only happiness and to be freed of suffering. This is not something unique to me. It's not something just shared with those in the room, but that is something common to all living beings. And so here, through this process of dependence arising, what we've heard tonight, the key points to take, uh, take and to think about now, is where does our unwanted suffering come from? If we call the unwanted suffering a result, we know that from this dependency on cause and effect, this effect or this result comes from a cause, and that cause is afflicted minds. Then if we say, so if we look, say our afflicted mind, such as anger, if that is a result, then that too came from a cause. What was that cause? And that was the ignorance of self-grasping. So in this way, we can use this understanding of dependent arising to see this process that leads to all our unwanted unhappiness. Then on the other hand, our wanted happiness. So if that's a result, what does that come from? So that comes from causes such as wisdom and love and compassion. So this is uh, um, uh, what we can take away from here, how we can th- what we can take away from tonight's class, how we can think about dependence arising, in terms of how we can uh, uh, accumulate what causes and how to accumulate these causes for our desired happiness and to eliminate our un- unwanted suffering. And to conjoin this then with a wish to engage in this process, not just for our own betterment, but in order to be able to lead all things to a state of unsurpassed happiness. So then thank you. Then we'll finish here and we'll continue with the text tomorrow. Thank you.